praise the Lord. Praise Jesus. Uh, we thank the Lord for tonight. For bringing us here safely. Let's bless him. Let's thank the Lord Almighty. For escaping power throughout the week. The Lord has been so faithful. He is a faithful God. He's so wonderful. God, let's thank him and bless him. Let's give him praise. Let's give him glory. Let's give him honor. Let's thank him for Johnny Mercy. Let's thank the, God, the Lord Almighty for his faithfulness, for his goodness, and for his kindness towards mankind. Towards us specifically, those that love the Lord. The Lord has been so good to us because of our love for him. You know, let's thank the Lord. Let's bless him. Let's give him praise. Let's give him glory. Let's give him honor. Our God is a faithful God. Our God is a good God. He's a covenant-keeping God. Let's bless him. Let's exalt him. You have a father ne that never fails. You have God Almighty that never fails. Let's just bless him and exalt him. What a mighty God we serve. Let's thank the Lord and bless him. Father God, we just thank you tonight. We, we give you glory. We give you honor. We give you adoration. Father Lord, we thank you because you've been so good. We thank you because you've been so faithful. Your word is yea and amen. And those who put their trust in you, O oh God, you've never disappointed. Lord, we just thank you. We give you praise. We give you glory. You know, the psalmist said, I will, I will bless the Lord at all times. His praises shall continually be in my mouth. That's the reason why we're thanking him. Because he has been blessing us physically. He's been good to us. Spiritually, he's been good. God is faithful because it's been your um, it's been your light and your salvation. It's been your strength throughout the day. Let's thank him and bless him. Lord, we exalt you. We just give you praise. We just thank you, almighty, the creator of this universe. You know, Lord, we just thank you. We give you praise. We give you praise from the bottom of our heart. We say thank you, Lord. We've gone out today to walk and you brought us back home safely. You've actually delivered us from the evil of the day. You preserve our lives from all the arrows that have been flying, the unseen forces that have been going up and down, seeking whom they will devour. But your protection, you protected us. You've been our shield. You've been our fortress. You've been our strong tower. Lord, we give you praise. We give you glory. Take all the glory and all the honor, O oh God. For in Jesus' name we've prayed. Amen. Let's begin to pray right now. Let's commend the entire building to the house of the Almighty God. Let's sanctify the entire building. From the front, from the pulpit here to the gate, even to the main road. Let's play the blood of Jesus and sanctify it everywhere. We cover it everywhere with his precious blood. We sanctify, we play the blood that we cleanse every unseen forces. Every evil forces have deposited themselves out there. Thinking, no God, they will plant evil. But no evil that has been planted that will work. Because the Holy Spirit is with us. God is with us. You know, the fire of the Holy Ghost burns up every evil implantation that the enemy has done. We destroy every works of the evil one. We sanctify this entire building with the blood of Jesus. Every share is sanctified. That everyone that comes in, they'll sit in. They'll be, you know, as soon as they sat on the chair, you know, they will feel the power of the Holy Ghost. As soon as they sit down, they will feel the power of the Holy Ghost. God, move in a mighty way today. Move in a great way today. Have your way today in the name of Jesus Christ. Let's at this point in time pray that God will give everyone journey mercy. Yeah, today is uh, we are the doctors of Zion. It's only meant for our sister tonight. But God himself is so faithful. God will grant them journey mercy here. You know, they will come in and there will be no hindrance in any form or shape. Every delay taxes of the evil one will cancel. Everyone will come over joyfully, joyfully into the house of the Almighty God today. They will experience the glory of God. They will experience the presence of God because the presence of God is here in our midst. Let's pray that God himself will meet us, O God. Wherever we are, God will meet us. We'll go home transform. We'll go home change. We'll go home deliver from any form or shape whatever the enemy has planted let's thank the Lord God we do wonders in our midst today you know in Genesis chapter 24 verse 15 and it happened before he had finished speaking that behold Rebecca oh, who, uh, who was born of my uh, Rebecca just appeared 
you know, when the servant of Isaac went to seek for a wife for Isaac, what happened? As soon as he's done praying, asking God, oh God, to intervene. Asking God that he will not miss it. Asking God that the right, oh God, person for his for his master's son will come. And as soon as he's done praying, Rebecca appeared. Before he had finished praying, Rebecca came out. What a wonderful God we serve. Because every godly prayer is answered before the prayer itself is being finished or being altered. Because God is faithful. God knows the heart. God knows the mind. So we want to believe God today. Because the Bible is saying in John chapter 6, verse 16, verse 23, that my Father will give you whatever you ask in my name. And that's where we are here tonight. Because we are praying that the Father Almighty we give, we give, grant to us the, our heart desire. This is because Christ has pledged his word in his word and says that whatever we ask the Father of glory, that God will do it for us so that we also will be satisfied, so that we also will be joyful. So let's thank the Lord Almighty this, this evening that as soon as we don't, before we even utter whatever we want, Whatever you want to ask the Almighty God, God knows. You know, before the servant done, before you finish praying, Rebecca, Rebecca came out. And that's what's going to happen tonight. Because God knows our heart desire. He knows what we are, he knows what is aching, he knows what is paining, he knows the hearts, he knows what we are feeling, he knows the disappointment. He knows, oh God, whatever it is, God knows everything. Now, when we start praying tonight, God will answer. Because he said in his word, that my father, you know, we give you whatever you ask in my name, in the name of Jesus Christ. God will fulfill our heart desire. So as many as are coming, you know, to the heart of this sanctuary, to the heart of God, God will answer every single prayer tonight in the name of Jesus Christ. Because the Bible says in our midst, the prayers of God is here in our midst. Wherever we are, the Holy Spirit, the Father, the Son is with us. And that's what we believe. So, and that's why tonight, because of the Shekinah glory, because of the presence of the Almighty God, who will receive our answered prayers in Jesus' name. So that's why I want to believe God today that God will use all his ministers mightily for his own glory because the power of God will come. It's still the same yesterday, today, and forever. You know that it has not changed. As the Lord changed, it's still the same yesterday, today, and forever. God is still the same. The creator of the universe, the one who set all the galaxies, wherever he is, the star, the moon, is still the same God we are serving. He hasn't changed. So let's believe God tonight that whatever we ask in his name, the father of glory, you know, we do it for us in Jesus' name. And that's why we are praying tonight, believing God for the ones, believing God that the miracle, the signs and wonders will be manifested tonight in Jesus' name. Because we are going to pray, we are going to ask for his presence, we are going to ask him to be with us. He's already with us by God's grace. We just want to ask him to fill us to overflowing tonight and the Holy Spirit will do it for us. We'll be filled to overflowing filled my cup, Lord. That was the woman at the well. Say, you see, if you can give me water, I will, in fact, I don't need to come to this well to fetch any water. And the Lord Jesus Christ filled her to overflowing. She became a changed woman, a transformed woman. She went about preaching the gospel, bringing souls to the kingdom of the Almighty God, saying, come and see, is this not Christ who told me all the things that I've ever done? This is the only can be God. This can only be Jesus. And that's what Jesus did. You know, he knows the end from the beginning. Whatever we hide, he knows. Whatever we are shielding from him, he knows. If I decide me say, even if I go into the bottom of the sea, you will find me there. God will find, find us there. So that's why we need to open our hearts tonight. If there be anything that is hindering, that you think the Father does not say, God sees everything. And that's why we cannot hold anything back. We should repent of anything that we've all that has um, uh, kept us uh, not trusting God. That you need to repent. Say, Father, forgive. I've not trusted you enough. But share tonight and repent. I've opened my heart unto you, O oh God. Lord, search me. You know, cleanse me. Purify my heart tonight. Let me trust you to the end. Let me trust you. You know, when we have trust for the Almighty God, we believe. And that's why, you know, the Israelites in Hebrew, the Bible says, they did not enter into the rest of God because they did not believe. But for we that are here tonight, we believe. We have trust in God. And we're not going to fail him in Jesus', in Jesus name. Whatever way you fail the Lord tonight, or throughout the week, you know, you've made one thing or the other. Just ask the Lord to have mercy, to cleanse. Because holiness without which the Bible says, we cannot see God. 
But when we are pure in heart, everything becomes easy. You know, godliness is a great gain. That's what the Bible says. When we are godly internally and externally, what happens? You know, it will create a fertile ground for the Holy Spirit to come, for all our blessings to flow in. So that's why we need to ask for mercy tonight. Is there be any area of our life we've come short of the glory of the Almighty God? Ask the Lord for mercy because God is so faithful. He said, We'll serve our come to Him. You know, He will not despise. That is the God we are serving. We can just ask for mercy. We can just ask for grace. And God is faithful. He will do it for us. He will cleanse us. He will purge us and he will prefer us and we become a new changed person again, you know, to trust and to love him with all our heart. I just ask the Lord to have you have mercy upon you. That you, you surrender all unto him. I surrender all unto him, my blessed Savior. Who other Savior have you got? You only have our Lord Jesus Christ, our blessed Savior. You want to surrender all unto him tonight. Surrender all because he's here in our midst. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, they are here in our midst. You know, surrender all unto him. You know, make your heart a fighter ground. Where, oh God, the Holy Spirit comes in. Where, oh God, you, you receive all your blessing. Where there will be no hindrance. Ask the Lord to have his way tonight. The Lord will have his way tonight in the name of Jesus Christ. The Lord is faithful. The Lord is gracious in the name of Jesus Christ. So let's thank the Lord once again and bless him. Let's exalt the King of glory. Let's exalt the King of glory. The King of glory. The King of glory. Can you imagine when the King of glory just walks in? See the Shekinah glory. See the cloud, you know, taking over the entire place. And what else do we want? We just want his glory. We just want him to fill us overflowing like the woman at the well. Like the woman at the well. I was searching for things that could not satisfy. And then I had my Savior speaking. Draw from a well that can never go dry. Fill my cup, Lord. I need it all, Lord. Come and quench the testing of my soul. Bread of heaven, fill me till I want no more. Fill my cup, fill it up and make me own. Fill my cup, Lord. I need it up, Lord. Come and quench the same sin of my soul. Bread of heaven, fill me till I want no more. Fill my cup, fill it up and make me own. Fill my cup, Lord. I lift it up, Lord. Come and quench this thirsting of my soul. Bread of heaven, fill me till I want no more. Fill my cup, fill it up and make me own. The Lord will fill our cup to overflowing tonight. He will fill it to overflowing tonight. Because the woman at the well, she was searching. But our Lord Jesus Christ met her at that well. And she went home transformed. That's what the Lord will do for us tonight. He will fill us overflowing in the name of Jesus. He will fill us overflowing in the name of Jesus. Because the Lord has not changed. It's still the same yesterday, today, and forever. As the Lord changed. My Lord is never changed as the Lord changed. My Lord we never is the same yesterday, today and forever. As God changed, 
my God, we never, He will never change as the Lord changed. My Lord, we never change as the Lord changed. My Lord, we never change. Is the same yesterday, today, and forever. As Lord change, my God, we never change. The Lord will never change. It is the same yesterday and forever. You can pour all your heart unto him tonight. Let us pour out all our heart to him. He has never changed. He knows the end from the beginning. He has never changed. He has never changed. So let's trust him tonight. Let's pour all our hearts unto him. What a faithful God we have. What a mighty God we serve. He's a faithful God. He's a faithful God. What a faithful God we serve. Oh, what a faithful God. What a faithful God we serve. Faithful in every way. Oh, what a faithful God. Oh, what a faithful God. What a faithful God we have. He's faithful in every way. Oh, what a faithful God. Oh, sisters, what a faithful God. What a faithful God we have. He's faithful in every way. He's faithful. God is faithful in every way. What a mighty and faithful God we have. Let's thank him. Let's bless him. Let's give him praise that he's due unto him tonight. We serve a faithful God. We serve a faithful God. Let's thank him. Let's bless him. Let's exhort him. He's faithful in every way. He's faithful in all his ways. God is faithful. I have a God that never change. I have a God, a mighty God. Let's thank him. Let's bless him. Let's exhort his holy name. I am a new creation, no more in condemnation, yea, in the house of God I stand. Praise you, Lord. Praise you, Lord, and uh, we sing, Oh, Father, cheer of done. Uh, there's no slow meat need. I like in my spirit. Yeah, in the grace of God, I stand in your presence. At your right hand, there are pleasures evermore. You surround us. The earth is full of your goodness. The earth is full. Exceedingly, exceedingly. Abundantly for above, we have a heart so thick, exceedingly abundantly. We gave all things to enjoy, 
in your presence. There are fullness of joy at your right hand. There are pleasures evermore. You surround us with your favor, O Lord. The art is full of your goodness. The art is full with your love. Exceedingly, oh, abundantly, far above all we, we ever ask so or sing. Exceedingly, abundantly, you gave us all things to enjoy. Exceedingly, oh yes, abundantly, far above all we, we ever are so thing. Exceedingly, abundantly, you gave us all things to enjoy. In your presence, there is fullness of joy at your right hand. There are pleasures evermore. You surround us with your favor, O oh God. The earth is full of your goodness. The earth is full with your love. Exceedingly, oh, abundantly, far above all we, we ever ask or think. Exceedingly, abundantly, you gave us all things to enjoy. Exceedingly, abundantly, far above all we, we ever ask of things. Exceedingly, abundantly, you gave us all things to enjoy. Praise the Lord. Exceeding abundantly. Far above whatever we ask or whatever we think. The Bible says it gives us. God provides all our need. And that's why we are here tonight. You know, you've come into the presence of the Almighty God. To enjoy all that he has for you tonight. To enjoy all that he's going to give us tonight. Using all the ministers for his own glory. Exceedingly. If you believe abundantly. Far above all we, we ever ask or think. Exceedingly. Abundantly. You gave us all things to enjoy in your presence is with us tonight there are yes heart your right hand there are pleasures evermore you surround us with your favor oh God the earth is full of your good, the art is filled, the art is filled with your love. Exceedingly, abundantly, far above all we, we ever ask or think. Exceedingly, Abundantly, you gave us all things 
to enjoy. Let's continue that prayer. Uh, just bless the Lord that, you know, that's the uh, songs, you know, that was given to me in the presence of the Lord. The Bible says there is fullness of joy and there is pleasure forevermore. Our Father, we just want to thank you for this evening. We worship you. We adore you, Lord. We thank you because you are a faithful God. We thank you because you are God, who oh God. The Bible says you are God by yourself. And tonight, oh God, Father, we give you all the glory that is due unto you. The Bible says, oh God, Father, my Lord and my God, that whoso hover, hover a praise, glorify you. Lord, oh God, Father, we are glorifying you tonight because you are faithful. We thank you for your love. We thank you for the gift of life that you have given unto us. We thank you, oh God, Father, for the enablement to come to this place. Mighty King of glory, we return the glory back unto you. We say, be exalted forever in Jesus' name. Lord, oh God, Father, we thank you. As we come before you, Lord, into your presence, Father, we pray, oh God, Father, all that we need to continually stay in your presence. Lord, oh God, Father, tonight you will give it unto us individually and as a church in Jesus' name. We bless you, Lord. Take all your glory of God. In Jesus' name, we are prayed. Uh, tonight, uh, we thank God for the team that, you know, um, that the Lord has given, you know, to his church, you know, from the beginning of the year, uh, which is the, you know, glory, from glory to glory. And this month that you hear the glory of the presence of the Lord. And I pray that as you dwell in the presence of the Lord, the hand of the Lord will continually be upon our lives in Jesus' name. You know, when we talk about the presence of God, we know, you know, the presence of God, there is fullness of joy. And in his presence, there's power, there's liberty. In his presence, there is victory, there is freedom. And when all these things are in the presence of the Lord, then who is the enemy? Who is that thing, you know, that we say that we will not fulfill our destiny? But, you know, tonight we are told that one of the things that will make us not to be able, you know, to get what the Lord has given to us when we are in his presence, it is when we are not doing what he has proposed us to do. The purpose of his creation, you know, for us, it is when it is not being manifest in our life. And tonight, that's why, you know, we are talking on purity. What is purity? Purity, you know, is a form of freedom. It's absence, you know, of contamination. And that's what, the, you know, uh, one of the dictionaries says about it. So it is a condition, you know, of a quality of being pure, freedom from anything, you know, that police your mind or my heart. So freedom, you know, from guilt or evil. If all these things are in our life, I'm telling you, the presence of the Lord will be very, very difficult for us to abide. And I pray tonight, you know, that the Lord, you know, will help us in Jesus' name. It's a clear, clean, unlimited, you know, unmixed heart and attitude. It is characterized, you know, by having mind of God. It is characterized, you know, by having the love of God. A life that is purified. It is not selfish. It is a life, you know, that somebody will see you. Or even in your relationship, you will feel the presence of God. And those are the things, you know, that we can do for us to be able, you know, to enjoy, you know, the presence of the Lord. And the Bible tells us in the book of Matthew chapter 5, verse 8, it says, Bless, blessed are they that appear in heart. For they shall see God. Blessed are they that are pure in heart. 
for they shall see God. Our coming to church, our praying in the morning, our study the scripture. What is the purpose of, of it? For us to see God at the end of our rest in this earth. And so, this evening we are going to pray. We are going to talk to the Lord. We will pray for ourselves. We will pray for the church of the living God. The Bible says, blessed are they that are pure in heart. Is my heart pure? Is your heart pure? What is your state before the Lord? What is my state before the Lord? We come to church. We relate with people. But what is God saying about you? What is God saying about me? You want to go before the Lord this evening, and you want to begin to commit ourselves into the hands of the living God. You want to talk to the Lord. It is another chance for you and I to revisit the presence of the Lord. To ask the Lord tonight, God, here I am. Of myself, I can do nothing. The Bible says, if I regard iniquity in my heart, the Lord will not hear us. He will not hear me. He will not, you know, he, we, we will not be able to. You know, sometimes I, I, <laughs> I, when people say, you know, uh, they cannot forgive, I don't know what they've gone to the presence of the Lord to do. I don't know why, how they are able to stand, you know, to pray to God in the aspect of, you know, of, uh, of forgiveness. So we want to pray tonight. What is it that is in your life? What is it that is in my life that it is not going to allow you or me to stand in the presence of the Lord? Brethren, let's begin to pray. Let's begin to pray. Eternal rock of ages, Lord. I come before you tonight in the name of Jesus. By the grace of God, we are saved. It is by the grace of God. It is the first step. But the Bible says that if we are not pure in heart, if our dispos you know, disposition, it is not relating to what God wants, <laughs> the presence of God, we cannot enjoy it. We cannot enjoy the victory. And so we just don't want to waste our time. We want to begin to pray and ask God, God, we ask for your mercy. We ask for your mercy. The psalmist said, purge me, O Lord, purge me. You want to be purged of that selfishness tonight? You want to be purged of that inability to forgive? You want to, pur you know, to be purged tonight? It is God that can do it. It is only God. You want to go back to him tonight in the name of Jesus Christ. Father, in the name of Jesus. Oh, one of the friends of Job. Make references that who else can, who else, who else, you know, can be clean except God. It is only God that can cleanse us. It is only God that can cleanse our heart. We want to pray, we want to ask the Lord. Oh, God of heaven, oh, the redeemer of your soul, the redeemer of my soul, ask him tonight. Anything, 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 that heart that has contaminated it. Oh, in the church of God, without righteousness, it is impossible. It is impossible to enjoy the freedom of God. It is impossible to enjoy the victory that he has, you know, that he has promised us. Let's pray tonight in the name of Jesus. Commit yourself into the hands of the living God. Oh God, here I am before you. In the name of Jesus. Father, Lord, take away, take away, take away every impurity. In the name of Jesus that is contaminating, that has contaminated my heart. In the name of Jesus Christ. 
Oh, let us pray. Let us pray, my brethren, in the name of Jesus. Oh, ask of him, is your father. You know, when a child sins and he runs back to his father, he may be chastised, but he will still go back. Let's come back to him tonight. In the name of Jesus, Lord, oh God, Father, we come back. Ask the Lord to have his way. Let him have his way tonight. In the name of Jesus. Oh, a songwriter says, have your way, Lord. In my life, have your way, Lord. In my life, have your way, Lord. In my life, have your way, Lord. In my life. Brethren, has the Lord to have his way. <laughs> Oh, you want to be submissive to him tonight and say, Lord, let your will be done in my life. Oh, it is when the will of God is done in your life and in my life. Oh, that is when you will enjoy the presence of the Lord. In the name of Jesus. Oh, yes, let's pray, let's pray, let's pray tonight. Let's commit ourselves into the hands of the living God. Oh, let's say to him tonight, Father, we have come. We have come, we have come, we have come. In the name of Jesus. Oh, for his strength to be renewed. For your strength to be renewed. You want to pray in the name of Jesus. You know, the Bible says there's no man that puts his hand upon a plow that looketh back at his feet for the kingdom. Oh, our race is to the kingdom of God. Our race is to make it at the end. In the name of Jesus, God. Brethren, a lot of things are happening. Oh, this, you know, the signs of the last days. Oh, the Bible tells us in the last day, perilous and shall come and people will be lovers of themselves. Oh, it's, you know, give it to seducing spirits. We want to pray in the name of Jesus, God. Because they, you know, they, they, they find it difficult to listen and to abide in the in the sun doctrine in the name of Jesus let's pray we are so privileged in the, you know in the in the in the church that we have in the assembly that we have that the truth of the word of God is being preached unto us in the name of Jesus Christ let us let us pray let us pray in the name of Jesus let's pray Oh, the Bible tells us in the book of Hebrews chapter 12, you know, verse 11, it says, without holiness, no man shall say the Lord. We want to pray in the name of Jesus, without holiness, in the name of Jesus, ask the Lord to purify you, ask the Lord to provide you every contamination, every contamination. Let's pray this evening in the name of Jesus, oh, that the spirit of the Lord that is in you, in the name of Jesus, that it will destroy, in the name in the name of Jesus, God. In the name of Jesus, God. In the name of Jesus, Lord, I present myself before you. Let's present the church of the living God into the hands of God tonight. He holds his church. Let's begin to pray. Every street of the last days, in the name of Jesus, in D.I.C., let's begin to pray in the name of Jesus, God. Oh, I was going through, you know, a, a, a study. You know, that, that study continue. It says, when you find yourself, you know, you are not willing, you know, you are not willing to read the word of God. You find you are you are dragging yourself. Oh, let's pray. In the name of Jesus. Oh, that thing that has taken, oh, the desire to read the word of God from you, to study the word of God. Oh, that thing that has taken it, you want it to be purged out tonight. In the name of Jesus. Oh, yes, Lord, oh God, Father, we need your strength to go. We need to go in the name of Jesus. You want to pray oh that the Lord will revive will revive your heart in the name of Jesus. Oh the spirit of God in you. Let's pray oh that the Lord will revive it in the name of Jesus. Oh revival will bring purity. Revival will bring you know sorting the law. Revival will bring you, you know to a place of prayer in the name of Jesus. You want to pray Lord I am before 
call you tonight. In the name of Jesus, God, you want God to do something new, something new, something new in your life and in my life tonight in the name of Jesus, God. Oh, yes, Lord, oh, God, Father, I pray tonight in the name of Jesus, God. I surrender myself, oh, God. I surrender myself, oh, God. You want to surrender her as the Lord to have this way. You want to say, Lord, tonight in the name of Jesus, God, I give all unto you. I give myself unto you. I give myself unto you. In the name of Jesus, God. In the name of Jesus, God. You want to hold on for a while. Just look at your life. In the name of Jesus, God. What is it? What is it? What is it that is debarring that love of God in your life? What is it that is fighting it? Even in you. Even in you. You want to say to the Lord tonight in the name of Jesus. Oh, let the fire of Holy Spirit burn it out in the name of Jesus. God. Oh, you are saying it by your mouth. In the name of Jesus. God. Oh, let the fire of Holy Spirit. Let it destroy it. In the name of Jesus, God. let the fire of Holy Spirit destroy it. In the name of Jesus, so that you can be that which God has proposed for you to be. Oh, the plan of God concerning your life, the plan of God concerning my life, so that you can come to pass. In the name of Jesus, God. In the name of Jesus, God. Let them pray. Let them pray. Every girl, in the name of Jesus, God. Every evil. You know, the Bible says the heart of man is desperately wicked. Who can know it except God? It is only God that sees your heart. The pastors doesn't see your heart. Your leaders doesn't see your heart. It is only you. It is only you. It is only the Bible says sometimes oh that heart deceives us. Oh that heart deceives us. You want to say to the Lord this morning and this evening and say Lord I have come. I have come. The Bible says it that cometh unto the Lord Oh, must believe. It will not drive you away. It will not chase you away. You want to say, Father, I have come. Do something new in my life tonight. In the name of Jesus, God. Do something new in my life tonight in Jesus' name. Purify my heart. In the name of Jesus, God. Purify my heart. In the name of Jesus, God. Oh, the Bible says, except you abide in me. Except you abide in me. You know, a tree cannot stand in it on its own. Except it abide. No branch, no branch. Oh, can stand on its own. Except Set he abide on the in that tree. Oh, Jesus Christ is the tree. Jesus Christ is the tree. Jesus Christ is the tree. In the name of Jesus, God. Oh, the first sin has been purged away by, by grace. You want to say tonight in the name of Jesus, what is not making me to abide in you? Oh, Father, I pray tonight that you will take it away. Oh, by your power, you will take it away. By your power, you will take it away. I want to be that one, oh God, Father, that you are saved, oh, back by your grace. That you are taking, oh God, that you are building up, that you are investing in, in the name of Jesus, that at the end, oh Oh God, I will not be found wanting. I will not be found wanting. I will not be found wanting. In the name of Jesus. Oh, brethren, pray tonight. It's an opportunity for you. It's an opportunity for me. In the name of Jesus. Oh, purify my heart, Lord. Purify my heart, Lord. Purify my heart, Lord. In the name of Jesus. Uh, 
And the Bible says, Blessed are they that task for righteousness. You want to pray in the name of Jesus, God. Oh, that you will be focused. You will be focused. You will be focused. I will be focused in the name of Jesus, God. Oh, that the Lord will help you. Oh, to task him. Even the word of God in the name of Jesus, God. Oh, you will be hungry to be in the presence of the Lord at all times. In the name of Jesus, God. You will be hungry. I will be hungry in the name of Jesus God, to be in the presence of the Lord. To be in the presence of the Lord. Oh, by studying the word of the Lord. By studying the word of the Lord. By studying the word of the Lord. In the name of Jesus God. Oh, when you study it, in the name of Jesus, God, you want to pray. In the name of Jesus, that the Lord will give us the grace to meditate upon that word. In the name of Jesus, God, it is when you meditate upon it. And you pray it and, and it becomes spirit. In the name of Jesus, that is why it will be made evidence in your life. That is when people will see it in your life. That is when every selfishness, that is when everything that is not of the Lord, oh, will not stay there. In the name of Jesus, God. You know, the Bible tells us that we should renew our mind every day. Even with the word of God, in the mirror of the word of God, we will look at ourselves. We will say, Lord, this is how I am before you. You want, you want to change me. You will change me. You will change me. In the name of Jesus Christ. Oh, ask the Lord. Oh, for DICA, every member, every name member, in the name of Jesus Christ. Oh, that is committed. In the name of Jesus Christ. Under the leadership of this church, you want to pray for them. You want to leave them before the Lord. In the name of Jesus Christ. Oh, that they hand of the Lord will rest upon us. In the name of Jesus, let's pray. Oh, let's pray from the depth of our heart. In the name of Jesus, that Christ will be found in, in every life in the ICA. In the name of Jesus, God. Oh, when Christ is formed in us, we will see it. People outside that will see it. There will be no murmuring or complaining. There will be no fighting. Oh, there will be no gossips. In the name of Jesus, God. Pray that Christ will be formed in you. Pray that the Christ will be formed in the church of the living God. In everyone, in everyone, oh, that you know, is named by DIC. In the name of Jesus Christ. Look, uh, the Jesus Christ. Oh, God. It, uh, oh, it is what oh, God. It, I can watch. It, oh, God. It, oh, God. It, oh, God. It, oh, God. It, I want us to pray again. Let's pray for empathy and compassion oh for every brethren you know in DIC. we want to pray that the lord will take us to that level in the name of so that we will do the will of god so that the presence of the lord oh will be made manifest in our lives in the name of jesus you know whatever we sow we will reap whatever we sow we will reap let's pray for empathy let's pray for the spirit of empathy let's pray for compassion in the name of jesus in the name of Jesus, God. Oh, those are the attributes of Jesus, God. I just said now that we should pray. Oh, that Christ will be formed in us. Oh, that all our, you know, all, all, all our character, everything people will see not in us. Oh, we'll be Christ-like. We'll be Christ-like. We'll be Christ-like. In the name of Jesus, God. In the name of Jesus, God. In the name of Jesus, God. Let's pray for sincerity of heart. Sincerity of heart. Let it be to ask the Lord. Oh, that the Lord will make us to be sincere. Oh, we'll be sincere in everything that we do. In the name of Jesus, because God is looking at us, we will be sincere. In the name of Jesus, God, I will be sincere. In the name of Jesus, God. Oh, yes, Lord, oh, God, Father. We pray, oh, God. Oh, in the name of Jesus, God. In the name of Christ. Oh, Jesus God. Oh, the Bible says in the book of Ephesians chapter 6, verse 24. It says, Grace be unto them all, to all the ICA members. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. That love 
our Lord Jesus with sincerity. Oh, that love our Lord Jesus with sincerity. Let's begin to pray. Let's pray. We still have some minutes. Oh, that the people of the ICA, you and I, we are the church. Oh, that you will love the Lord with sincerity. Oh, the grace of God is upon our life. The grace has been given unto us. Oh, let's pray. Oh, that we will love the Lord. Let the love of God consume us in the name of Jesus. Christ. Oh, yes, Lord. Oh, God, Father, I pray. I pray for myself. I pray for my brethren, Lord. In the name of Jesus. Christ. Oh, that your love will consume us. In the name of Jesus. Christ. Oh, we will be sincere in our heart. In the name of Jesus Christ. Oh, that we love you. That we love you. That we love you. That we love you. That we will love you. In the name of Jesus Christ. Oh, yes, Lord, do God, Father. In the name of Jesus, Lord, do God, Father, we thank you. In the name of Jesus. We love you, Lord. And we lift a hope to worship you, oh my soul, rejoice, take joy, my King, in Father, your purpose for us is to love you. Your purpose for us, oh God, Father, is for us to abandon ourselves in your hand. Your purpose for us, oh God, Father, is to see no other thing than to rely on you. Father, tonight we come. Of ourselves, we cannot, you know, be pure by ourselves. But we have asked of you tonight, oh God, you will purify us. Lord, oh God, Father, you will make us your own. Lord, oh God, Father, that at all times, oh God, we will feel, we will dwell, we will stay, we will abide in your presence in Jesus' name. Father, we exalt you, Lord. Take all the glory, take all the honor, take all adoration, oh God. Be exalted forever in Jesus' name. In Jesus' precious mighty name, we are prayed. the Lord. Let us just bless the Lord for that session. We thank you, Father. We worship you. We honor you. We adore you. We thank you because you are so faithful. We thank you, Holy Spirit, for being control. We thank you for starting well with us. And we bless your holy name in Jesus' name. As we go to this session, Holy Spirit, take absolute control in Jesus' name. Amen. When we come to, sorry, I want to pass on let's see. The presence, I'm so happy. When I come into God's presence, I'm so glad. In God's presence, there is power. In God's presence, there is anointing. In your presence, the anointing breaks the yoke, breaks the yoke. Come into your presence, I'm so happy. When I come into your presence, I'm so glad. In your presence, there is power. In your presence, there is anointing. In your presence, the anointing breaks the yoke. And every yoke in your life tonight, as you come to his presence, be broken in Jesus' name. So, um, I read quickly from, okay, sorry, my topic is positivity, positivity, and uh, it is all with our theme for this month, which is in his presence, and that song has summed it all up, what the presence of God can do for us, and um, going into uh, just a, a brief 
um, description of our topic. Positivity is the practice or tendency to be positive or optimistic in life. When we are positive, we engage in positive thinking, have positive emotions, and engage in positive behaviors, e.g., like kindness, generosity, you know, all other things that are glad in the heart of the Lord, not of our own, but of, of the Lord. So, we are going to pray tonight. But before we do, I want to read uh, just one scripture because I only want us to pray and I don't want to talk. Um, don't want to talk too much. So, the book of um, Mark eleven seventeen says, Then Jesus thought, saying to them, Is it not written, My house shall be called a house of prayer for all nations? But you have made it a den of thieves. That, that last verse is not, uh, that last um, sentence is not a portion in Jesus' name. So I want us to dwell on the first one that says, Then, I mean, uh, uh, that it is not what I said, my house shall be called a house of prayer for all nations. Brethren, we cannot come to the to the presence of God without uh, having the positive thoughts, positive thinking, positive mind. Otherwise, sorry. Is it? Oh, oh, okay. Sorry about that. Yes, when we come to the presence of God and we come outside any other thoughts, any other mind that positive, then we're just playing club. And uh, Jesus says that his house is to be called the house of prayer. And uh, the book of Sarah, that is New Testament. The Old Testament said the same thing. He said, I will bring to my house, I mean to my mountain, and make them joyful in my house of prayer. Their burnt, burnt offerings and their sacrifices will be accepted on my altar. For my house shall be called a house of prayer for all nations. And for DICA tonight, this place is already being called the house of prayer, but you will see the manifestation, manifestation of it personally in your own life tonight before you live here in Jesus' name. So I want us to begin to pray. First of all, I want to thank the Lord for your life, for the salvation of your life, because many people, they are where they are not supposed to be. Why? Because the opportunity that you and I have, they haven't had have it. They are yet to know the Lord in their lives. Christ is still being far from them. Many has even tasted him and has testified to him as being sweet and has even I mean, has, has even uh, shared their, their experiences with people to say, come and taste. The one way or the other, the devil had drawn them back to the world. I want to thank the Lord that here you are in his presence. That it's not to say that since you have known, the, give your life to Christ, mountains has not been there, ups and downs have not been there, temptations since rising and falling have not been there, but something is, th is always there. The awakening power of the Holy Spirit that from the moment you and I are born again, Jesus has placed it. That when we fall and want to remain there, this awakening power through the, the Holy Spirit, we say, no, you're not going to remain there. With the fears, with the doubts, with the beating up and down, with, uh, with, uh, with our tears, that awakening power will say, stay where you are. So I want you to begin to pray tonight. That anything, any power that will override the awakening power of the Holy Spirit in you to remain positive, to be optimistic on what God has placed, has planted, has imparted in you, is canceled tonight by the blood of Jesus in the name of Jesus. Begin to pray. Begin to pray. That come what may, whatever it is that you may be going through, 
whatever is that's happening in your family, whatever is that is happening in the life of your children, whatever is happening at your, at your place of work, whatever is happening to your head, even that report in hospital, and they are saying, oh, everything is just negative, negative, negative. And uh, yet, the devil can't, can't, take, can't take you away, cannot push you away. I want you to begin to pray. That any power, anything, any, any, any negative, we know that the, the, the opposite of a positive is negative. Every power of negativity that wants to override the, the positivity power inside of you, begin to speak to it and begin to cancel it right now with the blood of Jesus. Cancel it with the blood of Jesus. No matter what, wherever they're com coming from, that the power of negativity will never override the power of positivity in your life in the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. You are here to stay. Not by your own, not by your own power, but by the power of the Holy Spirit. By the word of God. By the truth. And by your faith in that word. By that faith that you are holding on to. To say, come what may. This word, I will keep on, I will continue eating you. Eating you, come what may. Like, um, like um, uh, our great man, um, the psalmist, David says. He says, seven times. I felt that seven times God raise me up again. So you can fall how many times? Even more than seven times, but as long as you keep on saying God, God, I know that I'm falling. I know I've messed up, but I'm not going to give. I'm not going to remain there. Oh, brethren, I want us to pray. Sisters, let us pray. Sister, let us pray. There come what may. Yes, it comes to, it comes to, I mean, to, to a period in your life in my life, that you just say, God, why am I even serving you? Even the unbeliever, they're asking every day, where is that your God? But that awakening part inside of you is saying that my God lives. My God lives. Because he lives, I know that I have a future. I know that I have tomorrow. I know the thought that he has towards me. The thoughts of peace are not of evil. To give me an expected end. To give me a future. And as you continue the, uh, me, confessing those positivities inside of you, oh, the awakening jet in you will be awake. It will be awake, destroying every power of darkness inside of you. Inside of you that want to override the positivity power inside of you. That the every, every, every power, where they come from? Where, they, where is, is it from the family? Is it from, from, I mean, from work? Is it from friends? Is it even from you yourself? Is it the sin? Is it the certain sin that God has delivered you? That Satan keep on taking me back there? Keep on taking you back there? Whatever it is, you do not want to know. I do not want to know tonight. But that power of the positivity, that power of positivity will continue raising you up, holding you up in the mighty name of Jesus. Like we sang, in his presence there is power. In his presence, there is anointing. In his presence, there are nothing breaks the yoke. What is it that is standing in your way from breaking those yokes? Is it the sin? Is it the besetting sin? Is it the mistakes? Is it as a result of the power of, of, the, of the power of darkness? Is it as a as a result of, of ignorance? Is it is it because you are not the, I, I, I or you that we are not optimistic of the power of the power of, of the truth of the word of God? Is it because we just put that word? side and we are saying I can do it by myself. I can do it on my own. Whatever it is that may make you and I not to be optimistic, not to, to remain positive, begin to begin to bulldoze them with the power, the, the power and the blood of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, cancel them. Cancel them. In the name of Jesus, cancel them. In the name of Jesus, cancel them. Is it your marriage that the devil is trying to shake and he's saying that uh, the joy that you're enjoying that marriage is no longer going to be Begin to speak to that mountain that this marriage, God instituted marriage. It is not you that instituted it. It is not even the enemy that is saying you cannot, you cannot enjoy your marriage that instituted it. It is God himself that ordained it, that says that uh, I will enjoy my marriage. I will enjoy my home. I will enjoy my children. I will enjoy my health. I will enjoy whatsoever that blessing that God has blessed me with. I am here to enjoy it. You are here to enjoy it. You are in the house of prayer. You are in the presence of the Lord. And nothing, nothing, nothing is going to make you to go back home tonight empty handed. You never go back the same way you came tonight. In the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. Because greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. And there's no any weapon that is formed against you that, that, that will prosper in Jesus' name. Begin to pray. Continue to pray. Continue to, continue to pray. Continue to pray. As the fire of the Holy Spirit to burn. Begin to burn off everything that is negating the power of God in your life. In the mighty name of Jesus. 
anything that wants to overturn and to overshadow that positivity inside of you, begin to break it down. Begin to uproot it. Uproot it. Uproot it. Uproot it. Uproot it. With the blood of Jesus, by the power of resurrection of the uh, that, that raised Jesus from the, from the dead, begin to uproot it in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. We have a great example of positivity behavior. Positivity emotion from our Lord Jesus Christ. It is very, very easy for him. Even when he, when he was in that garden of Eden and he was saying, Father, if it is possible, take this cup, just take this cup away from me. But when that awakening power come, I mean, came upon him, he changed, changed his, his statement and said, nevertheless, Jesus said, nevertheless, not my will, but your will be done. So, brethren, oh, my sisters, what is it that is, that, that is really, really shaking you and saying that yeah, that your God? Are you still holding on to him? Are you still holding on to that word? And he's saying that, why don't you just try another way, another, another way, another practical way? Oh, what about the connect, uh, connection to this A, to this B, to this C? Ah, what are you still doing there tonight? Tonight, all those voices, silence them, silence them, silence them, silence them by the power that's in the name of Jesus. Silence them and send them back to sender. Send them back to sender in the mighty name of Jesus. Tell the fear where to go. Tell doubt where to go. Tell the, 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 negative, the negative voices you are hearing where to go. Let the negative voices know. The negative voices know that uh, our God, the God that you serve, the word that you are eating day and night, that he does not confuse. He doesn't give you any confusion. He gives peace. He gives peace. He gives peace. And that peace is what you possibly, you're possibly holding on to. And nothing will take it from you. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Because our God is not a God of disorder. He is not a God of disorder. We are, he can and say that I give you peace, and at the same time, turning your heart and turning your mind into a playground for Satan, for negativity, for, for, for failure, and for, for stagnation, for, for every negative thing that is standing in the way of positivity that God has given to you, the optimistic power that God has given you, and it's changing, changing your mind, it, and it's just revol revolving, revolving around, around your mind. Your head will be saying something, your heart will be saying another thing else. Oh, to Tonight, tonight, I want you to speak to those voices, to speak to those power that if after you leave this, this place today, it, they will never, never have any avenue to you again. In the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. The positive thinking will be telling you that I am healed. The negative one will be saying, why are you deceiving yourself? The negative power will be saying, that other spirit will be saying, go, go and check that report that the, that the hospital is saying again. Go and check it again. That is what, that is what the, negative, uh, the, ne the negative voice will be telling you. But on the other side, God is saying, I have done it. You are healed. You are healed. So tonight, I want you to hold on to that positive voice that is telling you that you are healed. That is telling you that, that your son is healed. That is telling you that uh, even that way what child has given you headache is delivered. Begin to tell yourself. Begin to tell yourself that negative, negative uh, 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 tongue will no longer control you. Negative uh, uh, um, confession will no longer have power over you anymore. In the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. In that song, we also see, we also see that in God's presence that we have anointing. But the negative voice will be telling you, who says that you, you have anointing? Anointing only belongs to the big men. It only belongs to, 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 the, to your senior pastor only. Who says so? From the moment you gave your, gave your life and you are walking in accordance 
to the word of God. And you no longer allow the sin that you have confessed to, call, to crept back. And I'm long, no longer entertaining the things that we kill, that, that we kill who God has made me, the new man that God has made me. You are anointed. You are ready for anointing. That, the, the, that you, you, are, you are speaking the Holy in, the, uh, in, in, in other tongues, that the Holy Spirit inside of you, God is praying through you, through you, by the, through the power of the Holy Spirit in you. You are anointed. Now I want to tell that voice that is telling you that uh, you are not anointed. Because you have no anointing, you cannot be delivered. Tell that voice to pack, to pack out of your life in the mighty name of Jesus. Tell say to yourself, I am anointed. Say to yourself, I want to hear, I am anointed. I am anointed. I am anointed. I am anointed to break every yoke that is holding me back, that is stealing from me, that is taking away things that God has given to me, that is, that, that is contained against my blessing. I am anointed to send you back to, to sender. In the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. Brethren, confess. Anything the Holy Spirit is telling you not to be confessing and to be doing away with, begin to do so. Be with the power of the Holy Spirit in you. With the anointing power of the Holy Spirit. With the anointing power of the Holy Spirit and the blood of Jesus. To draw the mark, to draw that demarcation line, that they will never come back to your life again. In the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. I'm more than conqueror. Overcome in this life. I've been made victorious. Through the blood of Jesus Christ, by the blood of Jesus Christ, I'm more than a conqueror. What about you? Are you not more than a conqueror? If you more than a conqueror, sing that song. I am more than conqueror, overcome in this life. I've been made victorious by the blood of Jesus Christ, by the blood of Jesus Christ. Say that to God in prayer, that you are more than a conqueror. You are an overcomer. Even that, 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 I mean, that, that problem, that mountain that is standing and saying that uh, I'm not moving, I'm not going nowhere. You can go beyond this, uh, be, 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 I mean, be, beyond this, be, beyond this cycle. Begin to break it down. Begin to say to that mountain that you are more than a conqueror, that you are an, an overcomer. And you are an overcomer. You are victorious. You are victorious by the blood of Jesus. Not by your own power. Not by your own mind. Not, not by your own mind because you have no power of your own. You can't do nothing of your own without Jesus. Without Jesus. Without Jesus. Oh, brethren, sisters, begin to just thank the Lord. Thank the Lord for what he has done, for what he's doing right now, for, for what he's still going to continue to do. In the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. I don't know what you are personally asking God for. That you have not even shared with anybody but it's just you and God. And you are saying, God, God, it is just between me and you. It is just between me and you. You know it. You know it. And the enemy is saying, this is your God. He has forgotten you. He's no longer with you. He's no longer with you. Tonight we are going with that testimony. You are going back home with the testimony that you are more than conqueror. That you have overcome. That you have overcome. That you have overcome. In the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. I read from John 17, 21 to, to 23, just before, um, as I'm round, rounding up. Jesus says, as you, Father, are in me, and I in you, that they also may be one in us, that the world may believe that you sent me. And the glory which you gave me, this is Jesus, I have given them. That is, Jesus is saying he has given you, he has given me. 
that we that he has given this to, we may be one, just as Jesus and Father is one. This is optimistic confession. Optimistic confession. If you do not believe it, if you, not, if you do not believe Jesus, if you do not believe this confession from the mouth of the one who died for you, why am I a Christian? Why are you a, why are you a Christian? In the face of that fear, in the face of that doubt, in the face of the confusion that the enemy wants to and is bringing in and out, turning your mind to a playground, turning your mind to a playground, I want you to say this to yourself. I am a child of God. I am a child of God. And I'm no longer a slave to fear. I'm no longer a slave to sin. I am no longer a slave to Satan. And I'm not, no longer a slave to self. So help me, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Because there are times that even we ourselves, we are the enemy to ourselves. But from tonight, as you leave his presence tonight to go home, his presence is with you, not just when you are in, when you are in the house of the Lord, at home, as you are walking, at, 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 at your work, wherever you are, his presence is with you. As you keep on confessing to yourself that I am a child of God, I'm no longer a slavery, I'm no longer a slave to the devil, to sin, to Satan anymore. And it will be so unto you in Jesus' name. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Let's begin to thank God for the two sessions we've had. Let's thank God for their sisters that he's just used this evening to bless us. Begin to thank him, give him praise, give him honor, thank him for how he has anointed them and giving them the boldness to come and pray and bless us. Just thank God. Thank God for this week that we've been praying about the presence of God. Let's thank him. I believe we've been transformed. I believe something has given way, either in gone out or coming. There's been a definite change in our lives. Let's thank God. If you don't feel it, thank God prophetically. Thank God for touching you. Thank him. Give him praise. Give him honor. In his presence, you cannot come out empty-handed. He has done something. Father Lord, we thank you. We give you praise. We give you honor. We glorify your holy name, O Lord, for your goodness and your mercy. Thank you for your faithfulness and your kindness. Father, none can be compared with you. You are a great God and you are greatly to be praised. We adore you and worship you. We thank you for answering our prayers. We thank you for transforming our lives. We thank you for the awareness and acuteness of the importance of remaining pure and being pure. Let's thank him that every negative thought, every negative confession is being removed from our thoughts. And we are now going to, con to, to confess positively. Let's thank God that the Spirit has birthed that in our hearts and in our spirit. Let's thank him. Father Lord, we, enjoy, we, uh, we bless your holy name and give you praise in Jesus' name. As we go into this section, Father Lord, we surrender ourselves to you. We pray that the Holy Spirit will take control and pray through us. I surrender myself to you, O Lord, and I say, Lord, use me according to your will. Let nothing that comes out of my mouth be mine. Let it be what the Holy Spirit has birthed. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. Amen. Amen. In this section, we are looking at, continuing to look at his presence. 
and the topic is productivity. Productivity. And I'm going, I like, I, I like when it comes to the Bible to be quite practical. So I'm going to take a story from a, a parable from Matthew, parable of the talents, which we know very well. But I'll read it quickly so that to refresh our memory. Matthew 25 from verse 14 to 30. In two minutes, I'm going to read it very quickly. It says, for the kingdom of heaven is like a man traveling to a far country who called his own servants and delivered his goods to them. And to one he gave five talents, and to another two, and to another one, to each according to his ability, and immediately he went on a journey. Then he had not received, then he who had received five talents went and traded with his talents and made another five talents. Likewise, he who had received two gained two more also. But he who had received one went and dug in the ground and hid his Lord's money. After a long time, the Lord of these servants came and settled accounts with them. So he who had received five talents came and brought five other talents, saying, Lord, you delivered to me five talents. Look, I have gained five more. His Lord said to him, Well done, good and faithful servant. You were faithful over a few things. I will make you ruler over many things. Enter into the joy of the Lord, the presence of the Lord. He also who had received two talents came and said, Lord, you delivered me two talents. Look, I have gained two more besides them. His Lord said to him, well done, good and faithful servant. You have been faithful over a few things. I will make you ruler over many things. Enter into the joy of the Lord, the presence of the Lord. Then he who had received one talent came and said, Lord, I knew you to, I knew you to be a hard man, reaping where you have not sown and gathering what you have not scattered seed. And I was afraid and went and hid your talent in the ground. Look, there you have what is yours. I stopped here because of time. This is a, a, a parable talking and discussing about productivity. Let's, this master to be our God. God has given you talent. God has given me talent. What are you doing with your talent? Are you producing? Are you being productive? Or have you hidden your talent for any reason? This one hid his talent because he thought his master was bad. If you are not using your talent, what is your reason for not using your talent? We have to search our hearts tonight. Our topic is productivity in the presence of God. And right now we are in the presence of God. We are going to go to the Lord in prayer. We are going to pray that that talent that he has given us, we are not going to hide it anymore. Shyness will not let us hide it anymore. Timidity will not let us, will not, allow, will not let make us hide it anymore. We are going to be productive. That's, you see, God was happy. The, their master was happy because they produced more. You are going to produce more in Jesus' name. Let's begin to thank God. Thank God that he wants us to be productive. He has given us everything we need to be productive. Let's thank him. He's a good God. He made it possible for you and I to be productive. Let's thank him. You know, when he created Adam and Eve, he said to them, go ye into the world, I mean, that means be fruitful and multiply. Productivity in the Bible also relates to fruitfulness. God wants us to be fruitful. Continue to thank him. Thank him for making us fruitful. He made Adam and Eve fruitful. He wants you and I to be fruitful. Being fruitful in his presence will enable us to contribute to the growth of the kingdom. 
through the power of the Holy Spirit, enabling us to evangelize and bring souls into the kingdom of God. This, that's one of the things that productivity will do for you and I. Just thank him. Thank him that you will not labor in vain. That everything you do, that God will ensure that you get a reward for it, that you, you get you produce it and you, you increase in productivity. Let's thank him. Let's thank him. Give him all the praise. Thank him that the Holy Spirit empowers you to be productive. The Holy Spirit guides you, leads you, teaches you. He gives you wisdom on how to be productive. In his presence, you will excel in what you do. You'll be productive and shine. Just thank him. Excellence. Thank him that you will shine wherever you are. Thank him that you will not be um, impoverished because of uh, laziness or anything, that you will be productive, that anything you do, you will succeed. Just thank him. Praise him and bless him. He is giving us opportunity to be productive. Recognize that God created you to be productive. From the parable that Jesus requires, from this parable, you can see that God requires, requires you to be productive. So we're going to go to the Lord in prayer now. I want you to begin to pray to ask the Lord to make you productive. I keep repeating the word because I want it to sink in. Lord, help me to be productive. Begin to pray. Lord, help me to be productive. Help me to be hardworking. Help me to be diligent and obedient, trustworthy. Endow me with all I need to be productive. Lord, help me. Lord, help me. Take away laziness from me. Take away anything that will hinder me. Lord, make me productive. Help me to be productive in everything I do, socially, physically, emotionally, spiritually, Lord, help me to be productive. Help me. Help me. Empower me. Empower me. You can see the master was very happy with those two servants. He gave them what they needed, needed to go and produce. God has given you and I what we need. Pray that he will make you productive. He will empower you to be hardworking, he will give you the wisdom you need. He will give you the strategies you need. Ask him to do so. Ask him to give you the knowledge you need. Ask him to give you the skill you need. That you will not get tired. You will not be discouraged. Lord, help me. Help me to be productive. That is your prayer. Lord, help me to be productive. Help me. Help me to be productive, Lord. I don't want one who will lose. You know, some people lose. You don't want the one. You don't want to lose. You want to everything you do to prosper, to make progress, to bear fruit. Lord, help me. Lord, help me to bear fruit. In the name of Jesus. Oh, Lord, help me. I surrender myself to you. I surrender my ideas to you. Not my own, but your own ideas. Not my own guidance, but your own guidance. Lord, help me. Lord, help me. I need your help. In the past, I've not done as much as I should. Maybe I don't understand. Maybe I've been looking at it negatively. But we have prayed for positive thinking this evening. Lord, from now on, I am a changed person. I am going to work hard. I am going to, especially in the kingdom of God, Lord, I'm going to be fruitful in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In James chapter 4, verse 8, it reads, draw near to God and he will draw near to you. Pray that God will keep you in his presence. Pray that God will give you grace to spend time with him. It's when you spend time with him, you will hear from him. 
and he will direct you. God will hear you. God will hear you. I tell you, I have a testimony today. The testimony is that when I left the house, I said, God, I am going where I don't even have the transport to do all the journeys. I said, I said God, send somebody. Do you know God did it? God did it more than I asked him. He did it to the more than I asked. Tonight, as you ask God to make you productive, he will. Go back to him and say, Lord, make me productive. Make me productive. What do you want to achieve for God? What do you want to achieve in his presence? What do you want to achieve in the kingdom of God? Do you want to be evangelizing and you are not doing it because you look at the people's faces and you're not bold enough? Tonight, you want to be productive in that area. Is it in your prayer life? Oh, I will pray in the evening. I'm rushing out to catch the bus. I'll pray and then the day will go and you don't pray. Call on the Lord. Call, ask him. He answers prayers. You want to be fruitful in his kingdom. You want spiritual fruitfulness. Ask him now. Draw near to him. Spend time in his presence. That's when he will begin to minister to you. That's when you begin to hear his voice. Maybe you're not hearing his voice as clearly as you should. Tonight, pray. You want to be fruitful in that area. Draw near. That is what we've just read. He said, draw near to God, and he will draw near to you. Make quality time. I know we all do, but you can still make quality time. Give a definite time in the day. You can say, oh, five in the morning, no matter what happens, I must be in the presence of God. Yes, diligence brings productivity. Pray that God will make you diligent in his presence. Pray that he will keep you. He will give you the grace to spend quality time and to hear his voice. Spend specific hours in God's presence to make you productive. To avoid getting caught up in activities that will hinder your productivity. Not phone calls. Not uh, sleepy, uh, being too sleepy. Ask him for the discipline to have specific time in his presence. Personal specific time. So I know we have specific time with him in the church collectively. But how about your own personal time with God? Tonight, call on him. Lord, I want personal time with you. I want to draw near to you so that you can draw near to me. Give me the grace to have that specific time with you every single day of my life. I know we've been doing it. I know we are doing it. We're going. God will help you to do it even more. If you've been spending, say, half an hour, God can make you to spend two hours. If they've been spending three hours, when I say specific time with God, it's not time that you're praying and you're... Jesus said we should pray any time without season. I'm not condemning that. But you need specific time with God. Ask God to give you that specific time with him. That time that nothing will hinder. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Lord, let your power guide me. Let your power give me the grace to make being in your presence a priority. I cannot do anything successfully without God. I need to be productive. Remind him again. Lord, give me grace to seek your face daily so that you will show me how to be productive, to dwell in your presence, to be overshadowed by your glory, pray to seek God for himself, one-to-one, -one. in the name of Jesus. Proverbs chapter 16, verse 3 says, Commit your ways to the Lord, and your thoughts will be established. Do you want your thoughts to be established? Do you want to be definite in what you are doing? Commit it to the Lord. Father, I commit my works to you. Improve my productivity. Establish my thoughts so I can make the right choice. When I'm reading, when I'm praying, when I'm reading the Bible, when I'm praying, Lord, give me specific message, specific way to be productive. Let my thoughts be established by you. Speak to me. Speak to me. Open my ears to hear you. When I hear you, to be definite. 
that it's you that I'm hearing. There will be no doubt about is it me, is it God, God to make you productive in that area. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, commit your thoughts to the Lord and you are, commit your works to the Lord and your thoughts will be established in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus. You see, there are many plans in a man's heart. Nevertheless, the Lord's counsel, that will stand. Proverbs 19, verse 21. All the thoughts in your heart, all the things you are planning to do, ask that God's counsel will override it so that you'll be sure you are doing the right thing, so that you'll be sure you are producing for the kingdom of God. We just pray that self can be our worst enemy. Ask God that you want to move away from self. You want it to be him and him alone. Let his counsel stand with you in everything you do. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Let his counsel stand for you. Begin to pray. Lord, give me insight. You need insight. You need discernment. Very important. Open my eyes to see the habits that is hindering me. Sometimes we have habits that look not even not sinful, but is hindering you. Op ask him to open your eyes this evening to see the habits that is hindering you from being productive. Ask him to reveal to you ways to better handle tasks so that you will be productive, so that something you do in two hours, God being on your side, you will do it in one hour. We are praying about productivity. We are praying about fruitfulness. Spiritual productivity is fruitfulness. We want it to prosper in us. We want it to increase. You cannot do it without having discernment, without having insight. Lord, give me insight. Lord, give me insight. Reveal to me ways to better handle tasks I must perform so that I can achieve the best result. You go for evangelism. How do you go about it? Ask the Lord to reveal to you the right way to do it, the right way to speak to the person, the, the moment to speak, the ways to speak, the language to use. Lord, give me discernment. Give me insight in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Give me insight in the name of Jesus. Oh, in the presence of the Lord, you will achieve all these things. Lord, schedule my activities. Organize my efforts by your spirit helping me so that I can be more productive. Oh, you want to speak to somebody. You want to evangelize to somebody. You need God's discernment. God to give you that discernment. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. I was speaking to a lady yesterday, and she was talking about somebody having very negative spirits around her. And she didn't want she, she didn't want to be around that person. And she spoke for quite a long time. And then I said to her, if somebody is having negative spirit, I don't at, at that time I didn't know whether she was a Christian or not. So I said, if somebody has negative uh, vibe around you, do you want to stay near the person? She said, no, I'm going to go into the presence of the Lord. I said, praise the Lord. Are you a Christian? She said, yes. God gave me that insight. And we began to, sp to, to talk about God and pray to God together. He gave me such a joy. I want you to pray now that God will give you the strategy, the discernment you need to to, to link to people to talk about God. Because when we were talking about it, yes, we were, the other people were there listening. That is a form of evangelism. They were listening. Lord, give me insight. Lord, give me discernment. Give me the boldness. Help me to know the right time to speak and the right and when to keep quiet. Lord, I need that. Lord, I need that. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, I want to be productive. I've seen that quite a number of times this week. 
when I will just be talking to somebody about something else, or somebody will be talking about something else, and something will just come out of my mouth, and straight away it becomes spiritual. God help me. Pray that God will help you. You don't need to quote the Bible all the time. You need to seize the opportunity in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Lord, reveal to, to, you, to me which, what, what I need to know in order to become more productive, more fruitful. In the name of Jesus. My heart's desire is to give my very best to you and to all that are around me. In the name of Jesus. The Bible says, come to me, all you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your soul. Matthew eleven twenty-eight 28 to 29. Begin to pray, Lord, strengthen me. Sometimes, you know, you might feel not wanting to talk, but ask God, begin to ask God now, strengthen me. Strengthen me spiritually, emotionally, even in your workplace. Challenges might come that will discourage you and affect the way you work. Going to pray that, Lord, give me, strengthen me. Strengthen me in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Father, Lord, and let us just begin to thank the Lord as we come to the end. Because from now on, we are going to be more productive. Lord, I pray that you give us the power we need to be productive in preaching the gospel, in prophesying. Give us the power to pray. Holy Spirit, guide us, empower us, enrich us, that we can contribute to the growth of the kingdom. Father, we thank you. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. Amen. For this last session, we just want to present to God what do you want in his presence or what do you want from his presence. In his presence, you know, we sang there is fullness of joy and there are pleasures at his right hand forever. There is nobody that comes into the presence of God and goes empty handed. God has something to give to every soul that desires something that comes into his presence. You always go back with something. So we are going to, I'm going to read um, a passage and then say maybe one or two things and then we'll begin to pray because I just want you to position yourself uh, for something specific tonight. I don't know what your desire is. I don't know what you've been speaking to God about. I don't know what uh, you've been asking God for in particular, maybe about yourself, maybe about your family, maybe about your children. But this is that time that you, I want you to come into the presence of God. Position yourself for a miracle. Position yourself, you know, to receive something definite tonight because you are in his presence and you will not go back empty-handed in the name of Jesus. I want to read from Genesis 28 from verse 10. It says, Now Jacob went out from Beersheba and went towards Haran. So he came to a certain place and stayed there all night because the sun had set and he took one of the stones of that place and put it at his head and he lay down in that place to sleep. Then he dreamed and behold a ladder was set up on the earth and its top reached to heaven and there the angels of God were ascending and descending on it. And behold, the Lord stood above it and said, I am the Lord God of Abraham, your father, and the God of Isaac. The land on which you lie, I will give to you. I will give it to you and your descendants. Also, your descendants shall be as the dust of the earth. You shall spread abroad to the west and the east, to the north and the south, 
and in you and in your seed, all the families of the earth shall be blessed. Behold, I am with you and will keep you wherever you go and will bring you back to this land for I will not leave you until I have done what I have spoken to you. Then Jacob awoke from his sleep and said, surely the Lord is in this place and I did not know it. I know many of us will be familiar with that story. I mean, here, this is, this is Bethel. And then Jacob laid down to sleep because he was, he was joining back to his father's place. So um, the night had fallen and he wanted to sleep. But he didn't know that where he, was, he, where he laid down to sleep um, was a place of an encounter. He didn't realize that it was an entry gate to heaven. He didn't know that God was in that place where he was. So he actually had an encounter. He had an open heaven encounter with God in that particular place because the presence of God was there. And the presence of God gave him revelation, a revelation that was going to now um, transform, you know, his life and his generations forever. So God at that point actually renewed his covenant that he's had with his forefathers, renewed that covenant with Jacob in that particular place. So from this passage, we can see that um, the, the presence of God gives us divine revelation. When you come before his presence and you shut out your mind against everything, you focus. When you, you, you focus on him and your eyes are upon him in his presence, something must drop from heaven. Something will come to you. There will be revelations. And not only that, the Lord listens to the prayers of those who are earnestly seeking him. So from that, we can see that the presence of God, you know, gives us divine revelation. God doesn't, he doesn't stage an appearance when he has nothing to say or when he has nothing to give or nothing to, you know, a change to bring about. Again, we can see from there that the presence of God commands angelic ministry. There he saw a ladder that the top was reaching to heaven and the, the other, the other uh, end of the ladder was on earth and angels were ascending and descending. You know, um, the presence of God brings angelic, um, angelic ministry. Um, also, we can see that true encounters in his presence will transform and turn around your life and your situation. Um, they, they, there another example in, in, in the Bible is Exodus 34, verses 29 to, to 30. We don't turn to it. The presence of God can, re, uh, can result in an abiding glory. Abiding glory. For Moses, Moses went into the presence of God for 40 days and 40 nights. He was there. And by the time he left the presence of God, what happened? His, his face was shining. And even Aaron and the children of God could not look into his face. Not only that, the presence of God also guarantees peace and security. In Exodus 33 verse 15, we saw Moses again pleading with God to journey with them. Um, and he said to God, if your presence will not go with us, please don't allow us to live where we are. That they were not going to move from where they were unless God was going to journey with them. And again, we can see also that the presence of God brings sweetness. Sweetness and satisfaction. And that's again in Luke chapter 9, verse 28, the mountain of transfiguration. When the Peter, James, and John uh, were, uh, saw Jesus Christ transfigured before them and his face shone, not only that, Elijah and Moses appeared and they heard the voice of God. And Peter said, wow, this place is good. Let's not go anywhere. Let's just make three tabernacles, one for uh, Moses, one for Elijah. And one for Jesus, so that we can just dwell here. Let's not go down, you know, from the mountain again. So, what I'm, we are going to begin to pray. What I'm trying to say is that when you come before his presence, expect to get something. And I want you to believe that tonight. We've prayed about, you know, uh, we've prayed about purity. I believe that God has answered. We've prayed about um, um, uh, positivity. I believe God has answered. We've prayed about um, productivity. God has answered. But what are you desiring tonight as a person? 
what is it that you want God to do for you as a person tonight? I want you to position, let's begin to pray. Tonight, I want you to, you know, earnestly desire the glory of his presence. There is always a glory that comes with his presence. There is always a present that comes with his presence. There is always a blessing that comes with his presence. I want you to position yourself for that this evening. The glory of his presence. The blessing that comes as a result of his presence. I want you to strategically position yourself for an open heaven encounter in his presence tonight. As we go into this last session, I want you to focus on him. Just focus on him and begin to pray. What is that? That you want God to do. What are you asking God for? You want an open heaven encounter here, right here tonight before you leave. Because we are here in his presence. And in his presence there is fullness of joy. In his presence there are pleasures forevermore. We have said it, you are not going to go back empty handed. You are not going to go back the same way you came. You have come into his presence tonight. You must go back with the glory and the blessing of his presence. Uh, with the glory and the blessings of his presence. With the glory and the blessings of his presence. Uh, what is it you deserve from him tonight? Uh, what is it you are looking up to him for tonight? What is that particular thing you are desiring of him? You are in his presence. Just focus on him. Position yourself for a miracle tonight. Position yourself for a blessing tonight. A specific blessing. A definite bless blessing. A tangible blessing. A visible blessing that you know, yes, I came to the presence of God on this Tuesday, uh, on, I mean on this Friday night, and the Lord blessed me. I met with the Lord. I encountered his presence. You are in the presence of God right now. I want you to know that. And in his presence, there is fullness of joy. You are going back with that fullness of joy tonight. Position yourself for that victory. Position yourself for that breakthrough tonight. Position yourself for that answered prayer because the Lord is listening. You are in his presence. What do you desire? You know, the song says, I am in your presence, Lord. Bless me now. I am in your presence, Jehovah. Bless me now. You are in his presence. He's ready to bless you. He is ready to bless you because he will not allow you to go back empty-handed. He will not allow you to go back the same way you came. Oh, the Lord is blessing you tonight. You are getting a definite blessing. You are getting a visible blessing. You are getting something tangible from his presence tonight in the name of Jesus. I just want you to position yourself for that blessing. Position yourself for that blessing tonight. Be connected with him. Just key in and then you carry your blessing. Just key in to him and you carry your blessing. Focus on God. Forget everything around you. Forget even the things that didn't go well, you know, at, for, uh, throughout today, maybe at work, maybe at work, forget about everything. Just shut your mind against everything. Focus on God because he's here to bless you. There is a particular blessing he wants to deliver to you. You know, you see, Jacob was in that place. He didn't know that the presence of God was there. And the Lord gave him a revelation that transformed his generation forever. The Lord is here. The presence of God is here. Believe it. The presence of God is here. And God is here to bless you. He's here to, to give you something definitely to take home tonight. You, all you want to, all you need to do, to do is open your mouth and tell him. Because I don't know of anybody in the Bible that came into God's presence and left the same way. You are not living the same way tonight. You are not going back empty handed. You must live with something. Something tangible. Something that is definite. Something that is visible tonight. What is it? What is it? Another time that Jacob came before the presence of God, when he encountered the presence of God, he wrestled with God and he held on to him and said, I will not let you go unless you bless me. I will not let you go unless you bless me. And he got his blessing. Ah, do we have any Jacob in the house tonight? Is there any Jacob in the house tonight? Is there any Jacob listening to me tonight? Is there any, any Jacob online listening to me tonight? What is that thing? What do you want? What do you desire from him tonight? What is it? Just mention it. Name it and nail it. Name it and nail it. Name it and nail it. Ask him and it shall be given unto you. What is that particular thing you want him to do for you? The Lord, his presence is here. His presence is here to do you good. His presence is here to deliver to you, to deliver to you, to deliver to you, even that which is needed, that which you need, even that which you need that you don't even know, he will give to you. Because that is his, that is, that is his, his nature. 
His nature is to bless anybody that comes into his presence. You are in his presence tonight. You are in his presence tonight. The Lord is here. The presence of the Most High God is here. I want you to key in into him. Key in into him. Focus on him. Mention whatever it is. Name it and nail it. The presence of God will deliver that blessing to you tonight. The, ble the presence of God will deliver that blessing to you tonight. Apply all the things that we have talked about. You are here with a pure heart. Oh, be positive about it. Be positive about the goodness of God. Be positive about the nature of God that he blesses. Uh, he gives. Uh, he gives in his presence there is fullness of joy. Be positive about it. Uh, and also that your prayer tonight would deliver productivity. Your prayer tonight would deliver a visible evidence into your hand. Your prayer tonight at this few minutes as we are focusing on him, your prayer tonight will give you a tangible evidence. You are not going to go back the same way you him. Whatever it is, whatever it is, begin to mention it to him. Whatever it is, begin to mention it to him. God is here to bless you. He is here to bless you. You are going back with that blessing. You have been in his presence. You will not go back empty-handed. You will not go back the same. You are going back with a blessing. Whatever it is you desire, whatever it is you mention, whatever it is you whisper into his ears tonight, you are going back with it. You are going back. It's going to be delivered to you in the name of Jesus because his presence is here to do you good. His presence is here to do you good. His presence is here to bless you. His presence is here to bless you. You are not going back the same. Mention it to him. What is it? What do you desire? What do you want from him? What have you been crying to him about? Oh, maybe throughout this week, maybe throughout this month, you've been saying the same thing. You've been saying, God, look at this. God, look at that. God, you know that this is needed. You know that this is it. Mention it to him. His presence is here tonight. The Lord will deliver that to your hands. The Lord is here to bless you tonight. In the mighty name of Jesus, there shall be a manifestation, a manifestation, a manifestation in the name of Jesus, a manifestation, a tangible evidence, a definite evidence, a visible evidence. You will testify that tonight you came into the presence of God. Tonight you came into the house of the almighty God and the Lord visited you. And the Lord visited you. You had an encounter. You had an open heaven encounter. The Lord delivered your blessing to you. Tonight you are going back with a blessing. You are going back with a definite blessing. In the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. You've been in his presence. Tonight your joy must be full. Your joy must be full. Your joy must be full. You are going back with fullness of joy. In the mighty name of Jesus, your joy must be full. Your joy must be full. You must know that you've gone into his presence. You must, even people around you must know that you have been in his presence. Oh, something must happen tonight. Something must happen tonight. Something must happen tonight. There is a definite blessing that the Lord is delivering to you tonight. In the mighty name of Jesus, by virtue of your presence here tonight, by virtue of your presence before him tonight, in the name of Jesus. Be positive about it. Don't doubt. Don't entertain any doubt. Today may look like an ordinary Friday. It may, it may look like any of those Fridays, but I tell you it is not. I can assure you it is not, because tonight his presence is here. His presence is here in a new way and is sending you back with a gift tonight. You are going back with a gift. You are going back with, a, with an evidence, with a tangible blessing. Whatever it is you are whispering to him right now, he's hearing. You are going back in the name of Jesus. You are going back with it in the name of Jesus. Speak to the Lord. I want you to speak to him. Whisper it into his ears. Mention it. And as you mention it, as you mention it to him, he will do it. He will do it. He's faithful. He is faithful. He is faithful. When he promises, he fulfills his promises. When he promises, he fulfills his promises. He's a faithful father. Mention it to him. He's just waiting for you to whisper. He's just waiting for you to talk to him. He's just waiting for you to connect with him. He's just waiting to hear your voice. He's just waiting for you to mention it. It's not that he doesn't know it. He knows it, but he's waiting for you to say, God, this is it. This is it. And as you mention it to him, as you mention it to him, there is a command that is leaving heaven tonight. A command that is leaving heaven tonight. The angels that are bringing, 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 bringing down the blessing, bringing down the blessing, 
bringing down the blessing in the name of Jesus. Bringing down the blessing. Yes, I want you to. I want you to believe it. Angels are bringing down your blessings tonight. You are not going back without the blessing because God had been here before you, and because He had been here before you, He had proposed to bless you. He had proposed to bless you. You are not going back the same because you have been in His presence. In His presence, there is fullness of joy. There is fullness of joy. There is. You are going back tonight with that fullness of joy in the name of Jesus. You are going back tonight with that fullness of joy in the mighty name of Jesus. Look up to him. Look up to him. Connect with him. Just focus on him. Focus on him. For this few minutes remaining, focus on him. Just focus on God. Keep your focus on him and begin to connect with him. 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 In the name of Jesus. I can hear in my spirit somebody saying, God, but when are, we, when are you going to do it? When are you going to do it? We even said that same thing to God today. You said, God, I've been praying, I've been asking, but when, when are you going to do it? God wants me to tell you that I make all things beautiful at its own time. It may look like it's delaying, but I, am, I have not delayed. I have not forgotten you. It is coming. The Lord says he will do it. Just be patient. I don't know who you are, but that you have kept on saying to God, but God, when is this going to happen? When are you going to do it? God says, don't worry. I am still on course. I make all things beautiful at its own time. And there is somebody here too. It looks like you are spiritually you're on, on reserve. You are struggling. You are struggling in your spiritual life, especially in your prayer life. And you've been thinking about what to do. God wants me to tell you tonight that you need to spend more time in his presence. If possible, go into fasting. Praying and fasting and your spirit will be revived. You can tell that your spirit is getting weaker and weaker and weaker. But if, as you spend more time in his presence, the Lord will revive your spirit in the name of Jesus. Your spirit will be revived. And so God, God is telling me again about another person. Uh, you had a negative dream overnight. Yes, and that dream really bothered you. It bothered you. But God wants me to tell you that you shouldn't be afraid. Don't be afraid, he said. Don't be afraid. That dream will not stand. Neither will it come to pass in the name of Jesus. And by the unction and the power of the Holy Spirit in the house tonight, we cancel that negative dream in the name of Jesus. We cancel that negative dream in the name of Jesus. It will not come to pass. Neither will it stand in the name of Jesus. Whatever it is the enemy had presented to you in the dream, that we cancel tonight with the blood of Jesus. We cancel it in the name of Jesus. Father, we bless you, we worship you. We give you glory, we give you honor. Lord, we decree and we declare that your people, as they have been in your presence tonight, that fullness of joy will be theirs in the name of Jesus. Fullness of joy in every area. Fullness of joy in all its definitions. Fullness of joy in all its ramifications. It will be theirs in the name of Jesus. There shall be a manifestation of that which they have whispered into your ears tonight in the name of Jesus. Father, we decree by virtue of our prayers for these few minutes we have spent before you a tangible, a visible, and a definite evidence in the name of Jesus. Thank you, everlasting Father. In Jesus' name we've prayed. Begin to praise the name of the Lord. Give him praise tonight. Give him praise. Give him praise. We praise you, Lord. We just thank the Lord for tonight. We receive it invisible, visible, tans tangible miracle. We receive tonight in Jesus. And everybody said, I receive that. I receive it myself, and so shall it be in Jesus' name. You see, we're not going back the same in the name of Jesus Christ. So we've come to the end of tonight's blessing. I pray that we all go home with our blessing, our miracles in Jesus' name. Also, those online also, the Lord is blessing every one of us in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. We thank the Lord for all those that have led us tonight. It's been wonderful. The Lord will strengthen everyone in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name we pray. We'll come to the end of the service. Is there anything you want to give to the Almighty God tonight? 
let us just give an offering to God for the mighty things he has done for us, for his goodness and for his mercy. Let's give to him as we are giving. Let's bless him. And also let's believe God that by God's grace on Sunday, you know, to be mighty in the name of Jesus. The prayers of God will be so awesome in our midst that we all will be, we'll be so drunk with his presence that will not be the same again in Jesus' name. Praise the Lord. So we just thank the Lord tonight. We bless everyone that is given. May the Lord enrich you mightily in Jesus' name. And may the Lord strengthen you as you go out there, you know, to walk. And the Lord brought you safely home. The Lord, we're going to do that in Jesus' name. Fill your cup to overflowing in the name of Jesus. In Jesus' name we've prayed. Amen. So let's rise up and share the grace. So the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forevermore. Amen. Remain blessed. <laughs> and the Lord go with you in Jesus' name. Amen. <laughs>